So for years, one of the most reliable punctuation rules on the SAT has been that the period is equivalent to the semicolon. The period is equivalent to the semicolon, meaning that whenever you see two answer choices like A and B here, where the only difference is period versus semicolon and then capital versus lowercase, you can eliminate both of them. The reason being that both of them serve the same basic function. That is, they both serve to connect two independent clauses. So if one would work, the other would work. If one of them doesn't work, the other one will not work. Now, this continues to be true with the new digital SAT. If we look at a question like this, we see that answer choice C has a semicolon and a lowercase t. Answer choice D has a period and a capital T. So once again, both of those are going to have to be wrong because the only way in this context to use a semicolon is to use it to connect two independent clauses. And since we don't have that here, it doesn't work. Same thing for the period. Now something they're doing on the digital SAT that they did not do on the paper SAT, or at least not very often, is to ask questions about another usage of the semicolon. This one, we could say that the period and the semicolon are not going to be equivalent. They're not equal. And why are they not equal? Because the semicolon in this context is being used in a very different way. It's being used to separate items in a list items that themselves already contain commas. At least one of those items will contain a comma. And so you can tell that you're dealing with one of these questions if you have some sort of list and you look at the answer choices and you see that the only differences are in terms of commas and semicolons. Okay, commas, semicolons, so a lot going on here. How do we answer these questions successfully? I think what you want to do is identify the item in the list because there probably will just be one, the item in the list that is not interrupted by a blank. Uh, what they seem to be doing on most of these questions is having the blank fall at the end of one item and the beginning of the next item. And so what do I mean by an item? Well, here it says that this uh, person, Joshua Henson, helped produce a few different things. What were those things? Well, the third thing, the last thing in the list, underlined in yellow, is that he helped produce a Rosetta Stone language course in Chickasaw in 2015. Okay, so that whole thing is an item, meaning it's something that is part of a list. So that means the second item in the list is going to be, well, it's going to end right there. And so where does it start? Well, given that we have a list, we want the items in the list to be parallel to one another, to show parallel structure. And so if our last item ends with a comma in 2015 and our second item ends with a comma in 2010, it would make sense for our first item to end with comma in 2009, okay, or in some year. Okay, so what we're going to see here is that that semicolon marks the ending of the first item. So what did he help produce? He helped produce three things. One, the world's first indigenous language instructional app, comma, Chickasaw Basic, comma, in 2009. Two, an online television network, Chickasaw TV, in 2010. And three, a Rosetta Stone language course in Chickasaw in 2015. So the semicolon is basically acting like a next level comma. It's basically telling us here is where the end of one item comes and the beginning of the next one. Let's see what we have here. So, Nigerian author so-and-so's celebrated literary oeuvre, sort of catalog, uh, includes The Joys of Motherhood, a novel about the changing roles of women in 1950s, blank, a television play. So we, we can easily get lost if we focus too much on that portion that includes the blank. So again, what we'll do is start at the end, because that way we can see the basic form of what's being listed. And what do we see here? Okay, Head Above Water, Her Autobiography. Her Autobiography. So we have a title of a book and a brief description of it. Very brief description. Okay, that suggests to me, especially when we look at the first item here, The Joys of Motherhood, a novel about the changing roles of women in 1950s. Well, we want our first item to end with that description's ending. So just looking at that first part of it, B or D could be correct. 
because both of them have a semicolon. So the, the comma doesn't work because it doesn't clarify where one item ends and the next one begins. What is it that distinguishes B from D on this one? Well, we do need some kind of comma here. So our second item starts here. A kind of marriage, comma, a television play about the private struggles of a newlywed couple in Nigeria and head above water, her autobiography. So we can look at this list and see that what we basically have is, you know, it includes title, description, and then semicolon to signal that that item is ending. Then a kind of marriage, comma, a television play about the private struggles. So the next title, description, and then finally item C, or item three, title, and description. Okay, so if you're gonna use a semicolon after one item, you use a semicolon after the next one, and then you put an and, and then you finish with a period. One more example, and here, again, it's a, it's a semicolon question, but I've zoomed in because the screen capture was not high resolution for whatever reason here, but let's read this sentence. The Arctic Alpine blah 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 in Norway and this other garden in Brazil are two of many botanical gardens around the world dedicated to growing diverse plant blank, fostering scientific research, and educating the public about plant conservation. Okay, so once again, once again, we're going to start with the third item, the one that isn't interrupted by the blank, and see what we can figure out about it. Well, it's saying that they are dedicated to doing a few different things. Okay, the third thing is educating the public about plant conservation. We go to the first item, growing diverse plant something, fostering scientific research. Okay, so our list needs to make it clear that we're talking about basically three different activities in this case. So the first one is growing, the second one is fostering, and boy do they love that word fostering on the SAT, sort of supporting, encouraging, three, educating. Now, why are they using a semicolon here? Why are they using a semicolon? Why don't they just use commas? Well, if it had said growing diverse plant species or growing diverse plant communities, there would be no reason to put a semicolon. You would just put a comma and then you would put a comma there and then you would end it with a period. And so why are they using semicolons here? Well, we scroll over to our answer and we're going to see that it's because they're adding a little interruption in here. Plant species, both native and non-native. Okay, so we don't want to put the semicolon here because that suggests that both native and non-native is going to be modifying whatever comes next and it wouldn't work to say both native and non-native comma fostering or something like that okay so we notice here that as we zoom out again apologies for the resolution on this one as we zoom out we can see that the basic structure of the list is they're dedicated to doing these different things, growing, fostering, and educating. But because this first item includes an, an interruption and a positive, you could describe it either way, uh, both native and non-native, the fact that this does include a positive means that, well, it's got a comma, so we need to put a semicolon to mark the boundary between item one and item two. And to be consistent, since we're using a semicolon at the end of the first one, we need a semicolon at the end of the second one, and then we go with the period there. But to recap, we've got two different uses of the semicolon. The first usage is to separate, or if you'd like to think of it this way, separate or join two independent clauses to mark the distinction between two independent clauses. And what is an independent clause? It's just something that can stand on its own as a sentence. So he ran, I jogged. Okay, they can be really short, but the point is if you can use a semicolon in this context, you can use a period. The distinction between the two is too subjective. So if you can use one, you can use the other, and it's for that reason that we would say that the semicolon and the period are equivalent in that context. But in this other context, this other context where it's used to separate items in a list, in which 
the items being listed already contain commas, just like we've seen in those previous examples. Here, we would not say that the period equals the semicolon. We wouldn't say that at all. But again, the, the semicolon in these examples, in these questions, is going to be like a next level of comma, meaning since the commas are already being used within the items, the semicolon is being used to separate those items.